Hello there and welcome. Let's get started with this quick and simple video on how to use the newest DaVinci Resolve 14 by Blackmagic Design. Please leave comments and suggestions inside the video description to improve our next video guides for this software. DaVinci Resolve is a professional video editing software used to create your own customized videos and slideshows with the use of advanced audio and visual effects. In this video, you will see all the basic features you need to know how to start as a beginner. When you open Resolve, you start with a window called Project Manager that lists all your latest projects. You can open one by double-clicking on it and come back to the Project Manager by using the home icon in the bottom right corner. The Project Manager shows all the projects located inside a specific database that you can check by clicking on Show Hide Databases. By default, you have just one database available called Local Database, which is a simple link on a Mac folder that you can check by right-clicking on it and going to Reveal in Finder. All Resolve projects are saved as .db files. To see how to use Resolve, let's start with a new empty project by going to New Project below and defining its name. The software interface is composed of five main workspaces, as you can see at the bottom. The Media Workspace is used to manage all the files imported inside your project. The Edit Workspace is used to import and edit your media to create your own customized video. The Color Workspace is used to adjust and correct the visual appearance of your files. Fairlight is a new interface used to adjust audio. The last tab, called Deliver, is used to render and export your final video. In this beginner tutorial, we are going to see just the Edit and the Deliver workspaces. A Resolve project is fully created inside the Edit workspace by editing and managing imported media through its timeline below. So the first thing to do is to import all the media files you will use, such as videos, pictures, and sound files. You can do this by dragging and dropping these files directly from Finder on the project timeline. All imported files will be listed inside the Media Pool panel on the left where you can hover over each file to have a quick preview of these, or double-click on one to view it with a larger preview complete with its player at the bottom. All files imported are shown as colored rectangles called clips complete with their file name. Visual clips, such as pictures and video frames, are in a blue color and are contained inside rows called video tracks, indicated as a V plus a number. Sound files and audio from videos are in a green color and contained inside audio tracks with an A letter plus a number. You can also use the Timeline View options to show video thumbnails time by time and audio waveforms directly on the clips. You can move in time by holding Shift down and using your mouse wheel. Hold Alt down and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out around the red playhead. The main video preview in the top right corner is used to check the overall content inside your project timeline. In particular, this shows what the project looks like exactly where the red marker is placed. You can view different frames by clicking directly on the timeline, or check the project frame by frame by clicking and dragging it in time. For a professional playback, use the player below the video preview. Now, let's see how to edit the clips with the normal edit mode enabled. You can move a clip in time by clicking and dragging it. In case you move a video clip with sound, both the video frames and audio are moved together since they are linked. You can unlink these by right-clicking on them and unchecking Link Clips. You can also move clips from one row to another. In this case, a new video or audio track is created. Multiple video tracks are quite useful to modify the clip's visibility in case clips are overlapped in time. In case these get overlapped on different tracks, 
The clips on the upper track are shown above the clips placed on a lower track. In case clips get overlapped on the same track, the overlapped clip will get cut. To stretch clips in time, just click and drag from their edges. You can stretch and shorten pictures freely, but video and audio files have a limited duration in time. If you shorten these, you will cut part of their content. Another way to stretch clips is to modify their playback rate. If you right-click on a clip and go to Change Clip Speed, you can regulate the playback speed as you like. A speed percentage lower than 100% means the clip will play back with a lower speed, so it will last longer. Whereas a percentage higher than 100% increases the playback rate, so the clip will be played faster and will be reduced in time. You can also check Reverse Speed to play back the clip in reverse. Remember to use Command and Z or Control and Z for Windows to undo your latest actions in case you make any mistake. To delete a clip, just select it and press the Delete key. You can quickly create a copy of the selected clip by holding Alt down and clicking and dragging the copy where you like. To split a clip in two, enable the Razor Edit mode and click on where you want to split the clip. On the far left, you have several track options. Use the first icon from the left to hide the track content, which means hiding visual clips on video tracks and mute sound clips inside audio tracks. Use the second icon to lock a track. This disables any editing on the clips unless you unlock the track. On audio tracks, you also have a number, which indicates the number of channels composing it. You can also delete a track by right-clicking on it and going to Delete Track. This will also remove all the clips inside the track. The main video preview is also used to apply basic editing on the clip appearance by using several options in the bottom left corner, such as Transform and Crop. Transform modifies the basic clip properties. Select the clip from the timeline and click and drag the clip to move and place it. Use the external circle to rotate the clip around its center and use the other white nodes to scale the clip. Use the corner nodes to save the clip aspect ratio if needed. If you select Crop, you can adjust the size of the clip by using the nodes you see on it. To apply more precise editing, you can use the Inspector panel. This shows one or more sections depending on the clip selected, in particular video and audio. Under Video, you can adjust the clip's opacity, its scaling under Zoom, and its location under Position. Use Rotation Angle to modify the clip angle and its rotation point by changing the anchor point. You can also rotate through Pitch and Yaw and Flip by using the Flip buttons. Use the Cropping section to crop the clip precisely or add some feather with softness. Under Audio, use the Volume button to adjust the clip volume and use the Clip Equalizer to apply audio filters with customized frequency, bandwidth, and gain. To reset any of the clip properties, use the Reset button on the far right. Consider that when you change any of these properties, a waveform icon appears on the clip. This shows a time graph used to make a clip property change in time by applying keyframes. Keyframes are special points that save a property value in a fixed instant of time. Multiple keyframes can create a line where the property changes in time according to its shape. To enable keyframes for a property, just click on the rhombus button on the right under the Inspector panel. At this point, the property's keyframe line appears on the graph with a single keyframe on it. To make the property change in time, you have to add a second keyframe. So place the red marker where you like and click again on the rhombus button. With two or more keyframes on the line, 
you can click and drag on each point vertically to change the property value, and horizontally to change the instant of time. You can also use the icons on top to fine-tune each keyframe. To remove all the keyframes, simply reset the specific property and hide the time graph by clicking on the waveform button. You can also apply effects, transitions, and titles on your clips by using the effects library panel. Let's take a look. Transitions are special effects used to show or hide a clip. Video transitions work on the visual clip opacity and audio transitions apply a volume fade on the sound clips. To add any transition, select the clip and drag and drop the transition on the beginning or the ending part of the clip. Then, you can modify the transition duration by clicking and dragging its edges and remove it by right-clicking on it and going to Delete. If you want to change the transition effect, just drop another transition on the old one. To adjust the transition effect, just click on it to select it and use the inspector panel. You can also personalize the transitions in time as seen for the clip properties. Just double click on the transition and open the time graph through the waveform button. Video transitions can be applied between two different clips that overlap in time. Just apply the transition on the following clip placed on the upper track. The Title section is used to add text and titles. Click and drag text inside the timeline to import a piece of text represented as a new white visual clip that can be edited and managed as seen for the other clips. Inside the Inspector panel, this clip also has a text section used to manage the text formatting, styling, content, color, and distribution. You can also apply effects such as shadow, stroke, or colored background. You can apply keyframes if you want to change the text properties and time. You can apply amazing visual and audio effects on your clips through the Open FX section. Select the effect and drag and drop it on the clip. This will generate an FX icon and a new section called Open FX inside the Inspector panel. This lists all the effects applied on the clip in order, from top to bottom, complete with their own name. Double click on one to show and change its settings. Use the circle next to the effect name to turn it on and off. Use the arrows to change the effect position and the bin button to remove the effect from the list. Remember to save your project often by using Command and S or Control and S on Windows to ensure that you do not lose your progress. Now let's see how to render and export your final video by using the Deliver workspace. In the top left corner, under the Render Settings panel, select the way to export your videos. Choose Custom for completely personalized settings, or YouTube or Vimeo to match the best render settings to upload your video onto these sites. Choose Audio Only to render just the audio part. There are more at the bottom to modify the video properties, such as its format, codec, resolution, frame rate, and overall quality. Switch to the audio section to adjust all the audio properties. And under File, choose the file name. When you click on Add to Render Queue, select the destination folder for your video, and then this will be added as a new job inside the Render Queue panel on the right. Each job is saved and can be edited or removed by using the two buttons you see. At the bottom, next to Render, you can choose what to render from the timeline. Choose Entire Timeline to render it fully, or choose In Out Range to select which part of the timeline you want to render by modifying the edges of the selected and highlighted region. When Region and Render settings are defined, select the job to run and go to Start Render below. Thanks for watching this video. 
Check out our channel for more amazing and free video guides for outstanding professional software.